show our title slide this morning. We are continuing in the book of Deuteronomy. I started just before I left uh, for Canada. Be careful not to forget. And that is what we are going to talk about today. Let's go to slide number two. Um, we started with that v first chapter, first verse. These are the words that Moses spoke to all the people of Israel. Wonderful. They are standing at the border. They are going to finally enter into the promised land. A land. Can you imagine that? A land promised by God. And all of us have our promised land, our promise promised uh, by God, uh, extremely amazing promise that God's given us. And in order to receive these promises, we have to be prepared to enter into these promises by faith. We have to uh, follow the Lord's instructions and be able to receive. So anyway, we started with, with that, and we talked about listen. Remember and do not forget are the three core expressions repeated throughout the book of uh, Deuteronomy to uh, summarize it in a way. And what is the word that is we, we learn about uh, listen? Shema. Yes, Shema. I knew you would remember that. I knew you would remember that because we, we, we repeated it so many times the last time. Shema Israel, listen. And we talked about that the word Shema is not only to hear or to listen, but it's uh, listening with attention, with curiosity, and with a desire and a readiness to obey. Actually, when God spoke to Abraham and he renewed his covenant to, to Abraham, it says that, um, let me find it here, and through your descendants, all the nations of the earth would be blessed, all because you have obeyed me, and the word is translated by obeyed, but it's the word Shema, because you have listened to me, because you have Shema uh, to my words, all the nations of the world will be. So the word Shema, listen, is also obey. It's you listen with a responding heart, like an open heart, an obedient heart. You say amen to that. Amen. So how do you listen to God? How have you been listening to God lately? How have you been listening to the instruction that God has spoken to you since the day you were born again? Are you an obedient listener? Uh, a listener that is uh, interested to, to live w the instructions that God has given to you. So anyway, that's what we were talking about with much detail the last time. The second word is the word remember. And remember comes also many times in the book of uh, Deuteronomy. It is one of the major emphasis throughout the book. That's why Moses repeat the law. Remember, remember the law, remember the instructions of the law. Remember, they were instructed to, uh, you go to the next slide and then you can read the, 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 the scriptures about remember at the same time. They were instructed to remember their history, to learn the lesson from the past. They were instructed to remember God's personal interventions, how he delivered them from Egypt, and he provided to them uh, with miracles and, and the manna and their water from the rock and learning from the lessons of their fathers who died in the wilderness. They had to remember these kind of things. And they had to remember God himself and all of his dealing with them. He is God. Hallelujah. So let me bring it closer to you this morning. If we are exhorted to remember, remember your story. Remember your story before you were Christian. And remember your story since you have become a Christian. Some of you have a, a, a many miles behind you as a Christian. And some of you just started the, the race and, and this. But remember where you're coming from. Remember wh what the Lord has done. And one thing, remember what the Lord has been asking you, specifically to you, through His Word. Have you been listening, Shema? Are you careful to obey? Are you really remembering these words? Are you doing what the Lord is asking you? Maybe the Lord has given you understanding at some point, revelations, uh, or have you got sidetracked and then you're going on your own? Stop this morning and look back at your own story. Learn from it. Have you made mistake? Yes. We all made mistake. 
Can we learn from our mistake? Yes, we can learn from our mistake. Also, remember, stop at the border before you enter into the new dimension that God has before you. Examine your values. Examine your motives. And examine your experience. Look back and learn. You know, this is a great lesson here. They are going to enter into this wonderful land of honey and milk, a land that they don't have to dig irrigation channel, that the water comes from God, that the harvest comes from God. It's a land of blessing. God, we saw it in the last message, God cares for this land and He is giving it to them. He's chasing away pagans and sinful and wicked nations so that they will come. So before He's bringing them into, He has to prepare their heart. Is that it? He's not only to, br to bring wicked people to replace wicked people. So he's preparing a people that will inhabit the promised land. So it's the same thing for, for us. Are you stepping into a new land before you? Are you stepping into new challenges? Are you about to make life transforming decisions or life-turning decisions in your life? Are you settling in for a relationship? Have you been da online dating? Oh, yeah. <laughs> or <laughs> whatever you are doing. <laughs> Before you go further, maybe you better stop at the border of the land and look back, listen to the instructions of the Lord. Remember what the Lord is speaking to you and what He has for you. Are you stepping into a new job opportunities? Doors are opening and promotions are maybe ahead, a bigger salaries, but is that really what's going to bring the blessing of God to your family? Or is that going to over overwhelm you and separate you from your family? Whatever is the, the new step, the stepping, before you step into a new experience or uh, a new dimension of your life, decision needs to be made. Stop at the border. Look back. Examine your values. Are you ready? Are you pleasing to the Lord? Have you been listening? Because whatever you want to step in, you want to step in with the blessing of God. Am I right? Amen. Okay. So why should you Expect the blessing of God while you are stepping into something if you are neglecting the Lord. You're doing your own. You want to be independent. You're not paying attention to God. You're not shma. You're not remembering. You're not thinking about. But then when you will be there, you will say, God bless me. So should we expect the Lord's blessing? The Lord's blessing comes from the instructions of the Lord from believing Him, from trusting Him, from saying yes to His will to us. That's where the blessing will be with us. So if we go away on our own, and then oh Lord, bless me, bless me, why don't you bless me? It's kind of a contradiction in itself. Do you agree with that? So that's, that's why we are asked to do that. Before you step into a new land, stop at the border and do what they've done. God was preparing them for the promised land. For, for the promised blessing that He has promised into your life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So today, we are stepping into the, 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 the next point is never forget. Be careful not to forget. And this is also a repeated uh, instructions in the book of Deuteronomy. Be careful not to forget. Let me ask you a question first. Why was following the words of God so important? Why is it so important? And this book is all about listening attentively, being careful, shamar, being careful, being attentive, watchful, guarding. Uh, so that's the shamar, and the listening is shama. So why is it so important that throughout this book we are exhorted to listen attentively, be careful how we listen and to do what he is asking us, to remember all the lessons that he is teaching us through his word and not to forget all the lessons that we can learn from. Why is it so important to listen to the words of the Lord? And the second point to, to us here today, is it still relevant to us, New Testament Christian, 
to listen to these laws and to these regulations, to books like Deuteronomy. So let's look at this first and we will start having answers for our question. Therefore, be careful to observe them. For you will display your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples who will hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is wise and understanding people. What great nation ever had their gods as near to them as the Lord our God is near to us? Whenever we pray to him, or the expression could be, For whatever reason we may call upon him. See, we are walking with the Lord. And while we are paying attention to the instructions of the Lord, these instructions are reflecting on the wisdom of the Lord. This is the wisdom of the Lord. It distinguishes Israel. It sets them apart from the other pagan nations. It raised the bar that the justice of the, the social justice and uh, all of this, it, it brings the wisdom. The other nations look at this nation living according to God and they say, wow, that's what they say. Wow, what a nation, what a God they have. What the wisdom that they, they are showing by obeying all of these rules. You see, they were so wicked in these nations that God sent them away so that the, the, these, these people, a kingdom of priests, could be transformed, made holy, obedient, and then live in the land so that the nation, they would be a witness to the nation around them. And also as we live according to the, not only we receive the wisdom of God, but also look at this verse closely, the nearness of God. For as you walk with him and you pay attention to the instructions, the wisdom of God, it gives you first of all understanding. The words is mean is like the ability to separate mentally, to discern what's right, what's wrong. It's, it's a level of intelligence. You remember in the Psalm when it says, you give me more intelligence than my masters, than my teachers. And in Job, it says that. It gives me more intelligence. The word of God equips us. It brings us higher. The, the ways of the Lord are higher than our. The mind of the Lord is so much purer, clearer. And, and it gives us discernment, intelligence. It lifts us up. It makes us more noble. It's pure. It's perfect. It's, it's wise. It's powerful. It's life-changing. So we are so privileged. And then as we seek to understand his instructions, he says, what other nations have a God that is so near to them when, for whatever reason, they, they may call on him. So as you live with him, you may have whatever reason to call for, for him. Uh, your family needs, uh, your de decisions making, uh, you know, all sorts of uh, reasons why you may need to call upon him. And where is God? He is near. You can call on him at any time of the day and night, any time. And this is a privilege for all of us today. Say amen to that. Yeah. Because no other nations than the believers in Christ can have this kind of things. There's a difference between Christians and non-Christians in our society. We both go through the same trials and adversities. We, we, Christians are not immune from the trouble of this world. We are human beings. We share the same problems. But one group are going by themselves. We are going with a God that is near to us. And for whatever reason you may have to call upon him, he is right there to help you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So that's what we are learning. So what a privilege to have the, the, the wisdom of God and a God that is no near, so near to us. His guidance and his availability to us. So that is one privilege of uh, listening to the word of God and walking uh, according to that. Go to the next slide. We're talking about the law of the Lord. The, the law of the Lord touches every aspect of social life. It's really wonderful to make the people a holy nation of priests. This truth is also in the New Testament. You see, you see I, I keep, the more I study the Old Testament, the more I keep repeating the New Testament and the Old Testament repeats the same instructions, it's the same God. The difference is Jesus, yes, but the instructions is basically the same. We are a holy nation, a, a nation of priests. So look at these laws. They deal with all sorts of issues. Rape, marriage, and divorce. 
It's included in the law of God. Practicing social justice. This is now a big concern in many churches around the world, social justice. But God was already very clear on how to practice social justice. And if our government would just practice some of that social justice, the whole world would be so happy. Uh, Congo would be, would be fine, not, not fighting. And, and it, we, don't, we wouldn't need to have uh, refugees because they would all live in their own land with the, the, the righteous uh, living. So here we have practicing social justice and lending money, interest rate, farming, treating the poor, treating slaves and workers, setting them free and releasing debts every seven years. What other nations have lost so high and so fair and just as this? Court system, murder, thieves, fight. It's all included in the life. Very detailed uh, points. Finding lost property. You find something, you, maybe you know who it belongs to, maybe you don't know who it belongs to. There are rules for each one of these. Rescuing the animal of a neighbor, instructions about worshiping God, like, not like the other nations do. Tithing, giving, and, and the list goes on and on with much, much detail. God in giving us such a law, and giving to Israel such a law, elevate our standards like no other nations, a higher level of justice. For you will display your wisdom and your understanding. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at the next uh, slide. And the next slide again. <laughs> However, be careful. Here it's really wonderful. Shamar. However, there's t twice the shamar here. However, shamar and shamars your soul. So you have both of them, like be careful, be watchful, take care, be on your guard. Like it's a, it's a call to attention. Be careful, pay attention, and then be careful, keep your soul diligently or watch yourself closely. For what reason? So that you will never forget. That's the point that God wants. Be careful, be careful. Be careful just like that and be careful about yourself and how you approach the word of the Lord so that you never forget the things which you have seen with your own eyes. The miracles of God, what he has done for Israel since Egypt until the border ready to, to cross into the promised land. Don't let these memories of what you have seen God doing for you fade from your heart as long as you live. Teach them to your children and grandchildren. Never forget, especially the day when you stood before the Lord your God at Mount Sinai. And then coming back to the children so that they will learn to fear me as long as they live. And they will teach their children to fear me. When you live with that, you, you, as I said in the first message, the, 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 the thought of the command of God to, for the parents to teach their children and their children's children to pass on, to transmit the instructions of the Word of God is repeated all over the Word of, of Deuteronomy. It's so, so important that you will not forget. How many of you have forgotten sometimes where you put your keys? Okay. Some of them, some of us are better into that than other people. We always forget something. Hallelujah. I was going to say something, but it's going too, too far away, so I'm, uh, I'm not going to say it. So that is the kind, so that you don't like lose your mind over that, so that you don't f lose the focus, like being not aware or concerned about what's happening around what God is doing. By living under the, the rules of God, the guidance and the wisdom of God, you will inherit peace, blessing, victory, prosperity, and the list of the blessing of God is long. And the point is, and throughout repeated in the book of Deuteronomy, is that God loves his people and desires to bless him. Would you turn to your neighbor and say, God loves you. This is the message. This is the repeated message. God loves you. 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 God loves you.
Amen. That's the message of God all along in the Old Testament. These laws are not there to oppress. They are there to bring us into the fullness of the blessing of God with wisdom. With and then when we continue, we see that be careful, guard yourself well. Why? Why is that so important not to forget? The danger is that we grow careless and forgetful. Are you forgetful? Sometimes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Generally, human being, you know, we have a, it's, it's funny because memory, the faculty of memory is meant to remember, isn't it? But the faculty of memory always forget. It's, it's, a, it's a faculty that, that we, 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 we forget with that. Fading memories is not enough. To have, you know, you, you have heard of people who say, oh, I have read the Bible when I was, let's say, in the secondary school. If you met people like that, like some co colleagues or co-workers, yeah, yeah, I know the Bible. I have read it when I was in high school. Now today they are 60 years old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've read. So I have a memory of that. So what kind of memory do they have, you think? So to, to keep a memory alive, it has to be refreshed. It, you, you have to actively bring, us, bring, bring it back. That's why I love to tell my testimony. When I have a chance, I take a taxi, I walk with someone, I, I meet somebody. I love to tell the story of my salvation to someone, where, uh, what kind of person I was before I met Jesus, all the trouble I was in, how Jesus came to me, how he revealed himself, and, and all the transformation that, that I experienced in my life. I love to do it. You know why? One of the reasons why I like to do it, not only because I'm sharing to someone the truth, but I am re reliving it. It, it is, I am being refreshed with that. So it is very, very important. Memory, a, a memory of something, a memory of a truth, a memory of an experience will grow dim with time. It, it kind of fades away. So when it talks about don't let the, these memories of what you have seen God doing for you fade from your heart. This is the tragedy of the Christian church worldwide today. So don't do this. Keep you, yourself, your memories of the word, memorize, read, meditate, spend your time, focus, love the word of God. This will never repeat it enough. My last trip to Canada, I've been to four churches, I've heard a lot of stories, I talk with children, and unfortunately I have seen children of Christians who do not know the Word of God, they do not know Jesus. One, one uh, child told me, oh the devil, because I was asking him, do you have Jesus in your heart? Have you given your heart to Jesus? He says, oh the devil doesn't exist. I says, how do you know that? He says, I, I learned it in, in, in my video game. You know, if, if you don't learn, you cannot learn the Word of God outside of the Word of God. Whatever is spiritual, you want to learn something about God, about spiritual life, you will not learn it outside of the Word of God. But today people are not in the Word of God. A lot of Christians are worldwide are not reading the Word of God. They are not spending enough time in the Word of God. And these, this is a warning from the book of Deuteronomy for us Christians today. These memories that we once had, I don't care if you had read the Bible 200 times uh, in the, the first 10 years of your Christian life. If you have not read the Bible since then, until now, or very little, or s sporadically, then it's not. The, whatever you have known, whatever, you, whatever was fresh in your heart, whatever kept you connected and freshness with the Lord will fade away if you do not bring the freshness of it, if you don't activate it with, with something. Stir it up. Pass it on to, to others. This is very, very important. In verse 10 it says, Don't forget the day, a special moment, a special event, a special day. Don't forget the day, especially when you stood before the Lord. Have you had, and I wish you, you, you have, if you don't, then you're missing out on something somewhere in your experience. Have you had moments with God? Special life uh, touching moment, like 
moment of crying before the Lord, moment of God coming to the rescue, uh, you know, like special prayer time, like uh, special, special. Have you had that? I hope you had. Me, I had this. I was telling in the first service, I remember when I was youth pastor in Canada that many, many years ago, we used to have these weekends of prayers, these retreat prayers. We'd go in a cabin somewhere in the forest and then we'd go there on Friday after school and then we would pray the whole night until Saturday night. We would fast and pray. And sometimes we would prepare like movies, things like that, to, to learn something or to, to guide us and to prayer. We'd speak in tongues. We, we'd spend the whole night praying. And I remember one time I was watching a movie about the, a lot of, you know, earthquakes and disasters in the Philippines. It was about the Philippines. And I didn't know anything about the Philippines. I, you know, I, uh, I live very far from the Philippines and Canada. It's very, very far. On the east coast of Canada, you are not uh, Asian oriented. Because we live on the east coast of Canada, we are, we are European uh, oriented in uh, Africa and Central America. Asia is like a big mystery. It's very far from us. So we, uh, we don't think about that. We live on the east coast. So at that time, I was w watching videos on the, the, the disasters and the earthquakes and the floodings and the, the sorts of the big, big natural disasters. And, and we were praying. But as a praying, we, we would feel like overwhelmed because it's so big. It's, so, it's such a big disaster. You, you don't know how you could help or make a difference in these kind of things. But, you know, we prayed and we fasted over these things. And today I'm here. I'm going to the Philippines to a medical mission. And just, just recently, it just came back to me that when I was there without having nothing, no, no knowledge, zero knowledge of the Philippines, we prayed. And I remember these weekends, we would cry, we would be, you know, on our face, on the floor, we would, you know, like God was really touching our lives, you know, of things. I remember other instances for personal crises in my family at some point, at different moments, some, some special touch of God so deep that until now they are uh, an anchor of the soul, of my soul, uh, on the other side of the veil. I, I'm, I'm connecting to God and these are the, the stronghold of my faith. I know God spoke to me at that time and I know God gave me that promise for my family at that time. Uh, and I, I shared some of them when I, uh, a few years ago or sometimes I talk about it here. Maybe you remember yes or no. I was in Shanghai in a conference and I was translating an uh, African-American preacher. You, you know that story, eh? And uh, I just had a big family crisis at home and I was crying and I was discouraged. I was sometimes even thinking of quitting the ministry because it was overwhelming. And that day, uh, this preacher that we had never met says, oh, last night on my bed I was preparing. God gave me some words of prophecy, some words of knowledge and to apply to some of you in this room. And I was a translator. I was with her on the stage. And I even had doubts about this woman because I had heard her do the same thing the day before. So the second day, she was repeating what she had done the first day. So I was like asking myself, is she, is she really from God? Like, but I was a translator, so I had no choice. I'm repeating. And then she says that, and then she turns to me. The first one is for you, Pastor Rene. And she gave me a word of Isaiah 54, when it says, your children will be disciples of the Lord. I just started to cry because she didn't know about what I was living at the moment. But I had special moment of grace from God at horrible time in my life, and maybe you did have also. So here it says to us, never forget the day, especially the day where you stood before the Lord. Don't forget, this is important, because it will, it will help you uh, and you and you a pilgrimage because that's what we're talking about they're on the pilgrimage they are just before entering what god is promising to them the big thing that god is putting in front of them before you enter there prepare yourself listen remember learn something examine yourself and then just prepare to enter so 
Don't forget these special moments of grace that you have received, the times of fasting in the past, the times of crying before God, and the time when you were desperate and you fell on the face of, before God. I remember one time with Bridget, uh, we, we were in Canada, and I was, it was the first time I returned to Canada after moving to, to Hong Kong. And I was really, really questioning God about coming back or not. Did I make a mistake? And one day I was fasting and praying. I was preaching for a week of revival meeting, but my heart was broken. I, I, I drove there with tears in my eyes. I was, I was almost going to quit. How I can preach a week of revival to a church when my heart is in peace? So that week when I was fasting and praying during the day, God told me, do like Abraham, bring your children on the mountain and let me take care of them. That has been a very, very clear moment. From that time, I never doubt about I should be here. The, that, that time I was confused. I, am I in the right place? Should I go back? Should I stay? What should I do the Lord? But then it was a big step for me. It was a promised land. God called me to go to mission in, in Asia. But then I was questioning that. And God said, just like here, don't forget this moment of grace. Because later on, when you will doubt again, when you will go through hardship and question your, your ministry, your, the reasons why you are doing what you're doing, then these moments will come back to you and will, will be the, 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 the rock that, that will stand, help us to... to, to to stay there. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. So, do you have special moments? If you don't, if you have not had any special moment, maybe you need to start searching more for God. Fasting and prayer is when you will get these special moments. When you are desperate for something. Hallelujah. Next slide. Deuteronomy 6, 12. Be careful not to forget the Lord who rescued you from slavery in the land of Egypt. You must fear the Lord and serve Him. Don't forget your oppressions. Don't forget your sinful old life. Don't forget the misery you were there before. Uh, you knew the Lord, before the Lord. Don't forget the Egypt, your bondage, and all of your sinful from the past. And especially, don't forget the deliverance, how the Lord took you out of there. It's good for us to remember these things. I was bad. I was a lost sinner. I was going to hell. I had no hope for the future. I was abandoning my beautiful wife with a baby, a second child. I was going to abandon her. I was so selfish and I was so lost in, 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 my, in my life. And God came through to me. So I can always be thankful to God for saving me when I was 25 years old. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So for you, each one of us, you have a story. A story of salvation. A story of deliverance. So God says, don't forget where you're coming from and the great things that God has done for you. Hallelujah. Shamar, never forget that the Lord saved you. If he saved you, he, he can keep you. Is that right? Yes. Now you live on a rescued life. It's like it's the second chance. Isn't that right? If, if it would have been not of the Lord, you'd be dead and your sins. You, you'd be like having a miserable life, confused in the world, whatever, without God, without hope, without the promises and the covenant of God. You'd be there out the world, okay? So now, it's like you live on a rescued life. It, it's your second chance, so don't mess it up. How can you escape if you neglect such a salvation? That's what we learn in and, 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 and Hebrew. So now that you are, you are living on a rescued life, shouldn't God be feared? Shouldn't you know that God has a plan for that rescued life? If God rescued your life, He has a plan for your rescued life. Are you listening? Are you shma? Are you remembering? Do you remember the instructions as God spoken to you? Hallelujah. 9-7. Remember and never forget how angry you made the Lord. Oh, you say, oh, this verse, I don't like it. I don't like it to talk about the anger of the Lord. Have you ever made the Lord angry? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. We all did because we all were born in sins and we all offended God with so many ways and so many, so many times we made God angry. So he says, remember, don't forget. Don't even forget the negative experience from your past. Why? Is it, you know why? 
It's good to admit to yourself your sinfulness because it, it lifts up the grace and the power of salvation of the Lord. You don't deserve it, but He was gracious to you. You were lost, but He chose you and He lifted you up. So to, to remember this, it's not that I'm not speaking about living your condemnation. Oh, I'm such a bad sinner. I'm not worthy. I'm just a worm. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about be honest. Remember, don't forget where you're coming from. And that you made the Lord angry. But the, because this points and stress and emphasize even more the love and the grace of the Lord into, you, into your life. And also, it keeps you humble. And it's very important because, you know, after we've been a Christian for a long, long time, it's very, very, we, we all become a little bit self-righteous. I say a little bit, but maybe I should say not a little bit. We become self-righteous. We become proud of our knowledge and of our church life. And of, of, now we are really, we are good, we are the good guys. We are the good guys, and they are the bad guys, and we, we develop a sense of, a, of a self-righteousness, and to remember, not to forget where we're coming from, it's good for our humility. God needs to be glorified in our salvation, not us. We have not become a good person. It is God, God's work, it's God's, everything is God. and nothing is from us. The only thing we need to do for God is to Give him our faithful devotion. That's what the book of Deuteronomy is about. He wants your faithful devotion. Don't forget your faults, your failures, your disobedience. Not to condemn yourself, but to remember the grace of God, the forgiveness you receive in Christ. Appreciate it and live even more in love with Jesus. It's all about love. Y you know, yeah, it's all about love. Hallelujah. Next slide. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> Hallelujah. Beware that in your plenty you do not forget the Lord. Ah, this is so up to date. This is so much for us. And our plenty in Hong Kong and our Western uh, wealthy, abundant life that we forget and disobey his command. Or not listening, not to pay attention, not to do the things that he instructing us. Because we are so independent now. We can depend upon our bank account. We can depend upon a lot of other things than God. You know, you know we, we, many of our missionaries in the Philippines, you know, it depends upon God to heal their sickness. We don't need to in many ways because we take pills, we go to the doctor. It's so available for everything. But when you have nothing, you need to cry out to God so much more. So it's, it's good that in our plenty, you do not forget the Lord, you know. When you have become full, prosperous, have built fine homes, uh, silver and gold have multiplied, and everything else, be careful. Be careful. So that's the message. Don't become proud and forget. Become proud and forget. It goes together. Forget the Lord your God who rescued you from slavery. Don't forget that He led you through the great and terrifying wilderness. He gave you water from the... Don't forget your blessing, your prosperity, your well-being, all the good things come from me, the Lord says. Don't forget that. So now the things to forget. And the application of Deuteronomy and... and oh, it's finished. Okay. I must stop. Because the things that I need to say... It's too good to go fast over it. So I must stop here and keep it for the next time because there is more to say. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So do not forget the Lord. Do not forget where you're coming from. Do not forget His great forgiveness and salvations and the special moments. and Just, just love Him. Just be in love with Him. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes. Sorry?